Do you perform yoga with all kinds of different positions? Do you do it to balance your energy and get some exercise? And when you meditate, are you attempting to dissolve your ego so you can purify your chakras and blend with the cosmic mind? Do you want to discover your Godhead and become one with the infinite and escape into bliss forever? Although this sounds wonderful, there's something you need to know. Satanists, like Aleister Crowley, utilize yoga as a tool to gain spiritual power as well. Crowley enjoyed indulging in evil and he was proclaimed as the most wickedest man in the world. Crowley even wrote a book on yoga and how to use it as the path to awake inner power and to yoke with spiritual guidance. Crowley learnt the real art of occult magic from Alan Bennett. Bennett was the occult sorcerer of the Golden Dawn and later became the Buddhist Ananada Mateya. Notice how the desired goal for using yoga in Eastern religion is similar to Satanism, because the objective is to awaken and use the spiritual power of Kundalini energy. Kundalini is serpent or goddess energy that can transport and lock your spirit into cosmic union. Just look at the serpents above and below this statue of Buddha. Is this what you are seeking? To manifest and expand your Kundalini energy and maybe experience a sense of Godhead too? This should happen once you've mastered the ability to totally release your ego and surrender to the process, right? And once you do, you should awaken to the realization that you are a manifestation of I am God, just like the gurus that have come before you. However, do you know that once you totally yoke yoga with the cosmic energy, you won't be able to go back to your old phantom self? You might even be compelled to be a God-man, like this guru who has emptied himself completely to nothingness, symbolized by the ashes on his body. His emptiness allows the spirits to take over and make him into a God-man so he can perceive universal power. This is similar to what Rosaline Norton, the Australian witch, envisioned. Her art shows the power of the third eye chakra and highlights the visualization of the bond between inner and universal spheres of existence. Look how she depicts the serpent and the third eye. These are obvious focal points in her art. The serpent is crowned king and is a sexual part of Pan. Norton knew who she was dancing with. The serpent is also part of the Hindu god Shiva, and this is Shiva's son Ganesha. And there are thousands and thousands of Hindu gods and deities. There are also many divas and spirits who the gurus consult for wisdom. In meditation, these unearthly spirits are channeled in order to seek guidance. But do these spirits tell the truth? Most of these channel spirits claim that human life is really an illusion. But is this true? Because how can an illusion predict a future event? Like the return of Halley's Comet in 1910, and then its return in 1986. Halley's Comet next return is calculated to be on July 28, 2061. So here's another question. How could multiple people predict the same illusion? Some Buddhists teach that if all humans disappeared on Earth, the Earth would suddenly vanish, because there would be no one available to contain the illusion. But even Buddhists have to live in the real world under universal laws of reality. 
facts about the reality of human existence that archaeology certainly proves. Archaeologists such as Sir William M. Ramsey, who was the top archaeologist in his time. Ramsey was originally a skeptic until he actually investigated the biblical sites, which verified the accuracy of the biblical accounts of the New Testament. There is plenty of true historical evidence about the real Jesus Christ. This is the Jesus Christ that was nailed to a cross as our substitute for our sin so human beings can return to God. Because the human race became tainted with sin that the serpent generated by deceiving the first human beings to disobey God in the garden of original creation. Then the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die, for God knows that the day of you eat of it your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So sin, evil, and death entered the human race disguised as knowledge, and we were separated from God's presence. God said the penalty for sin is death, but God offered a sacrificial system as retribution for their transgressions. This is why they used to sacrifice animals for sins, or they'd transport their sin into a scapegoat, and then send the scapegoat out to wander and perish in the wilderness. Because God considers sin as a serious offense, as over 3,000 amazingly accurate biblical prophecies have proven. But God loved people so much that God sacrificed a part of himself in the form of his son Jesus as a complete sacrifice for all who want to come to God, because only a perfect sacrifice would suffice for the entire human race. And Jesus Christ was the special sacrifice that provides a way back to God. So, those who are willing to repent with all of their heart and accept Jesus as Lord and Savior will get the real Holy Spirit, a spirit so powerful and wonderful that the early Christians would even rejoice in prison even after a flogging. Many were tortured and fed to starving lions because they wouldn't recant their faith in Jesus. They preached that the only way to God is through the real Jesus. They taught to love your neighbor and not to believe every spirit. They didn't spend their lives sitting around meditating, attempt to manifest Kundalini, and claim that everything is actually an illusion. And the spirit of the Guru teaches self-glorification and escapism. Gurus teach to leave a neighbor alone to work out his own karma. And why I care about people or society because it's all an illusion anyway. All is God and God is all, so the creature is to be worshipped. The cow is seen as the earthly embodiment of the god Kamadenu. The Apostle Paul explains this strange transgression in the book of Romans. Professing to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man, and birds, and four-footed animals, and creeping things. One reason for these gurus' unreasonable beliefs is because gurus spend much of their time zoned out in an unconscious trance. And the problem is that the unconscious mind cannot distinguish the difference between what's vividly imagined to what's real. So no wonder there are so many bizarre beliefs deemed to be true. When a non-thinking mind of meditation spends long periods of time in a deep unconscious level, the immaturity of the unconscious mind is free to believe whatever pops into its mind. And when the mind gets conditioned to ignore reality, it becomes the perfect vehicle for the serpent energy which behaves on its own will and is uncontrollable. The nature of Kundalini shows it possesses and swallows a person. This is obviously a different spirit than the biblical Holy Spirit. Kundalini comes from a powerful spiritual being who was expelled from heaven for trying to be God. 
This evil being goes by many names, Abaddon, Prince of this World, Old Serpent, Lucifer, Satan, and he also disguises himself as an angel of light and has the power to be very convincing. Kundalini's spiritual energy can appear like a positive thing to seek, but gurus admit to a dark side to Kundalini. The truth is that some actually die trying to activate Kundalini, and many experience side effects like depression and psychotic loss of reality. The Kundalini experience is far different than the feeling of love, peace, kindness, and reverence for God via the Holy Spirit. Kundalini energy comes from Satan, the spiritual creature who is the god of this world, and has been granted permission to deceive and possess those that choose his ways. People who choose Satan's ways desire power, and they desire to have access to spiritual ability in order to magnify the self. The test is simple. How do you feel about Jesus Christ, repenting and asking for forgiveness of sins committed? If Jesus puts you off, this is a sign that you are not of God. And the real Jesus is not an avatar or the cosmic Christ that has automatically saved everyone. The authentic Jesus is God's actual Son. Also, most of TV preaching and modern Christianity is either a weak imitation or an abomination, so please do not use them as a reason to dismiss. Becoming sealed in His Spirit, the born-again experience, means willing to submit to God's righteousness, not your own. So the secret path that yoga is on doesn't look too healthy in the long run. Yoga positions are secret prayers to Hindu gods, which will no doubt manifest something in the long run. Doing yoga, which might appear beneficial now, may be yoking you to unwanted and invisible spiritual sources now or in the future. Be wise and do some extensive research into this without being biased, because it's so easy to just look for what we want to find. It's your soul, it's your destiny. Be wise. And thanks for watching.